What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are going to be talking about a forgotten lion, someone that I must bring up and someone that I forgot to bring up in my Larry Warford video. So let's get it started. All right, everybody, now Detroit Fan Man, I think it's Detroit Fan Man. Let me know in the comments below if that's what it is. It's DET Fan Man, but I'm thinking it's Detroit. I'm thinking, right, it's DET, right? Hold on, hopefully I'm saying this right. Either way, this guy called me out, all right? He called me out again. He's like, look, you're forgetting to mention my guy. And I did forget to mention this guy. And that guy is Joshua Gannett, the offensive lineman that we signed this offseason. I really haven't talked about him too much since we signed him. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's easy for me to forget players, but I really kind of forgot about this guy, honestly. So I needed this refresher. I needed him to call me out and be like, hey, you're not talking about my guy. You know, you're forgetting. And I'm like, all right, you know what? You're right, shoot. I got to do a video on this. I, I kind of forgot. I kind of forgot. And I forgot about the potential that is here because this was like a sleeper signing. You know how we talk about Reggie Ragland is like, you know, one of them sleepers because he was a former high round pick out of Alabama. He was a starter with the Chiefs, Super Bowl. And we signed him with such a cheaper deal. And then I love Danny Shelton because he was on a two year deal, a million. You know, I loved it because of the value there. We signed a guy named Joshua Garnett that potentially has that same similar value that those two guys could also have because Joshua Garnett was a former first round pick. And he's only 26 years old. He just turned 26 years old recently. So definitely a guy that we should be talking about more and definitely a guy that I should be bringing up a lot more. So let's talk about Joshua Garnett. Now, Joshua Garnett has only played for one team in the NFL. That is the San Francisco 49ers. But he's had to deal with a lot of problems. And those are mainly injuries. And that's the reason he wasn't really able to get on the field that much with the San Francisco 49ers. Because of that, they released him. They moved on. They, fi they fixed their offensive line in a different way. And he became a free agent. And Detroit Lions brought him in. And again, they signed to a $1.3 million deal. That's not a lot in the NFL. We understand that. It's not a ton of money. You know, you know that would be a lot for me. But for him, it's, you know, it's 1.3 mil. It's nothing crazy for the Detroit Lions to give out 1.3 million. But since he was a former first-round pick, we know that the ceiling is there. We know the chance. You know that he could be a really good player, and this guy could potentially be a steal for this season. And worst case, he gives us some nice added depth. You know what I mean? So that's that's what's solid about Joshua Gannett. But let's talk about him a little bit because I wanted to go look at what a lot of uh, people thought. You know, what, what was his draft profiles looking like? What did people think about him coming out of college? And I saw the same thing over and over, and it also matched up to what I talked about before when I talked about Joshua Garnett, and that was back when we signed him. So Joshua Garnett went to, went to Stanford College, and he was known to be a very, very good run blocker. He won two awards in 2015, the Outland Trophy in 2015, and he also won the Morris Trophy in 2015, which is the Pac-12 offensive lineman. So he won two awards in 2015. He was looked at as one of the top offensive linemen in the draft class, and that's why he went the first round. You know, the San Francisco 49ers traded back into the first round in 2016 to make sure they got Joshua Garnett because he was that highly touted. He was that uh, well known as an interior offensive lineman, kind of like Cesar, Cesar Ruiz was this year, like kind of like that kind of level. He was known to be a run blocker. He was a run grader. This is a guy that could run over people. This is that guy that you wanted blocking if you were in a running offense. And that's kind of what San Francisco has started to build. So to have a guy like that, it makes complete sense why they brought him in. So the Detroit Lions bring this guy in. And he honestly kind of reminds me a little bit of Joe Dahl in that sense that he's known to be a really good run blocker. He could play fullback a little bit, I guess, if he had to, but he's not the most polished or best best pass blocker but we really haven't got to see him to see him too much in the NFL so we know the potential is still there it's kind of like that untapped potential you know we talk about the Sean Hand and Austin Bryant untapped potential that's kind of what Joshua Gannett could have and we may have just picked up a steal he was also a team captain back in 2015 he was known to have great awareness he was a very aware player that was again just a great run blocker a great lead blocker for an offense but his big cons were pass blocking it wasn't necessarily that he wasn't aware of blitzes and stuff like that he was really aware of stunts blitzes he could pick up things the problem with Josh Joshua Garnett was not his ability to see what's going on, but necessarily just be a really good pass blocker. He would get kind of dominated by some of the better interior defensive linemen. In college, DeForest Buckner was a guy that he definitely struggled with. That's something that he struggled with in the NFL as well. There were a few times that he just got ran over. He just wasn't really good with the pass blocking in the interior. That was one of his main struggles, but it was at least average enough so that his run blocking was so great and that was average enough that he was still able to be a first round pick, right? Because if it was so bad to the point where like he was just getting destroyed, he would not have went first round. He wouldn't have went second round because if it's that big of a con, he wouldn't have went that high. So he was at least average at it, but he was really, really good at run blocking. But in the NFL, we really haven't got to see that. And a huge reason that he was released from the San Francisco 49ers were his injuries. Well, in 2016, he played over 700 snaps. He only had four penalties. He was graded out as a pretty solid run and pass blocker. Nothing great, pretty solid across the board. And four penalties but then 2017 everything kind of went downhill for him when it came to injuries and that's really the reason that he is now with the Lions so it could end up being a great thing because the injuries are nothing that you would think that necessarily could come back except for this one that is a knee injury now he had a knee injury back in 2017 he did have surgery so that could mean maybe it doesn't come back 
but that wasn't his only injury. So in 2017, he's out for the year. Uh, they bring in Lincoln Tomlinson, which is kind of weird from the Lions. They bring in Lincoln Tomlinson. And then in 2018, he's back. He's ready to go. Kind of gets beat out for the position. But again, another injury. He has a thumb injury, then a dislocated uh, toe. He just has injuries on top of injuries. Nothing serious that you think it would just keep coming back. But they're just little injuries here and there that just don't allow him to play or live up to that potential. So the Niners just say, hey, man, we, gotta, we can't keep him. He can't play. We got to move him. We got to let him go. And they let him go. And the Lions were able to bring him in. So the potential is there. We signed him to a cheap contract. He's 26 years old. He's got all these trophies. He was looked at as one of the top offensive linemen. And we signed him for $1.3 million, which, again, worst case is we cut him and he has no impact on the team. You know, best case, he starts. Obviously, in between there, he could add some depth for the Detroit Lions and potentially move around in that interior a little bit. So I really like the signing. I thought it was a good signing at the time because it was cheap, even though there are some injury concerns. But I had to do this video just to remind you guys of this player. And uh, this could be a reason that maybe the Lions don't go out there and sign a Larry, War Larry Warford because their offensive line is kind of deep. I mean, it kind of is. They got some nice depth, right? You brought back Kenny Wiggins. You brought in Odea Bushi. You got Joe Dahl. You got Joshua Garnett. I mean, obviously some players are going to get cut, but it's kind of deep. So maybe that's the reason they don't go out and bring in another interior offensive lineman. But I did want to point out Joshua Garnett. There you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Will he make the team? Thank you, Prop, for watching.